Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from The Black Dog, music for photographers. Alright, The Black Dog, this will mark my fourth time covering this long-running minimal techno trio. If you want an overview of their history, you can check out any of my previous videos on them. Uh, my review of their post-truth and Black Daisy Wheel albums in 2018 as the full and brief segment. Though if you want recommendations on what to check out without going back and clicking around, I'd recommend Spanners, Silenced, Radio Scarecrow, Music for Real Airports, and Neither Neither. All fantastic albums, and all quite different from each other, too. Their catalog is pretty rock solid, even outside of those albums. Now, last year I covered their previous studio album, Fragments, and I thought it was pretty solid for what it was, even if fairly predictable for them. But since then, they've started to take on a new hobby on the side. As you may be able to tell from the title of this album, uh, they took on photography. This actually became a pretty big thing for them. Uh, Martin Dust released two entire books of photography called Brutal Sheffield and Brutal Yorkshire, focusing on various concrete architecture around those areas in the UK. And now they've put out a whole studio album that was inspired by their photography work, and they had originally created just to uh, set the mood for themselves while taking pictures. And it is an interesting note in their catalog because it is their uh, third project to focus almost entirely on ambient material. The others being the above-mentioned Music for Real Airports and uh, Black Daisy Wheel. Music for Photographers is also the longest and most well-fleshed out of those three, stretching on for 77 minutes over 15 tracks, none of which are interludes, no bolts or anything. And while I don't think it has the former of those beat out for me, as I just thought the whole airport concept of Music for Real Airports was just a really clever and unique idea to start with, well, this new one isn't really anything new for them. On the other hand, I don't think I'd blink if you'd said this album actually did top that experience for you. I personally thought music for photographers turned out to be really damn solid, and I can pretty confidently say it's my favorite album they've put out since Neither Neither. Just some really good and well-enveloping ambient music that fits perfectly with the architectural photos they've been taking. A haunting and chilling experience that makes you feel like you're walking around a bunch of abandoned buildings, I guess. And despite the style and the length, this thing never felt like it dragged on too much for its own good or ever got boring. All of it does have the emotional resonance to back itself up. Going through individual tracks, this project starts out super strong with Dust Bunnies, a minimal mix of lonely paths that manages to both be foggy and distant, but also oddly warm and comforting. It's really good, pulled me in quite nicely right from the get-go. And uh, the next two tracks weren't as immediately gripping for me, but were growers with repeat listens. Uh, vertical grip on reality's arpeggiated C major chords kind of give me Spunkshine vibes. And, uh, the isolated, formless, melodic lines of Wamersley Line 1 feel like passing under, like, individual fluorescent lights while walking through a parking garage or something. That one might have been a least favorite on some lessons I gave this, but it, it was kind of difficult to decide. I still like every track on here. Both of the tracks with Oliver Ho were major standouts, though. Focus, uh, really stuck out to me with its emotive mix of choir pads and echoing guitar plucks. And Refocus repurposes those choir pads over a minimal Monolake-esque clicking techno beat. I think the latter was probably my favorite uh, cut in the bunch. In between those two, we got a couple of tracks I got kind of mixed thoughts on. I did feel oddly underwhelmed by Norman Foster New, despite it being the first instance in the album of any kind of rhythmic element. Basically just this one single line of jangly percussion clicking going through the whole thing. It's pretty neat, I recognize whenever it happens. It, I just felt like uh, the pads on top felt slightly stiffer than many of the other tracks on here. Compare that to a stronger cut like Sensor, which has very similar mixes of pad progressions, but those like build up, get a bit more dramatic than other cuts here. Doesn't have anything more to it than that, but doesn't really need to. And in terms of tracks with more rhythmic elements introduced, I was more pulled in by Bokeh Bokeh Bokeh. <laughs> Uh, the way the first half has nothing but a uh, low-key, brooding, bassy techno percussion that was just kind of plodding along and creating a pretty neat atmosphere all on their own. And then these melancholy melodic lines slowly start to get introduced and turn this track into another one of the easier highlights for me. And the second half of the project has no shortage of standouts too. Uh, Nighthawks introduced some watery, slow-moving pianos that made for one of the emotional high points. And while the first half of We Are All Memories is kind of just one single unchanging pad that feels like it could be a less dynamic version of Sensor, 
It does redeem itself with its much more evocative second half that forms more of a solid chord progression out of that one pad. There are some spookier and less melodic cuts that help add to the album's variety, like the wobbling sound effects on My Life is Bracketed. That track may only be two minutes, but it does help add more depth to the album as a whole. And Depth of Future also features lots of ghostly pads that are even more slow-moving than many of these other cuts over some random fuzzy clicking noises for texture. That one didn't really leave a strong impression on me, but it was cool. I've also got somewhat mixed thoughts on the 10-minute monster that follows. Uh, Light Room Lies, Dark Room Doom. <laughs> I'm not sure if this track really did the album's pacing any favors by being so much longer than all these other tracks, as well as being an entirely beatless cut with nothing but spooky, evolving pads the entire time. But there is a surprising variety of moods carried by these pads that turned out to grow on me more and more with repeat listens and feel more justified. Especially this one section from like the 2 minute mark to the 4 minute mark which has all these waves of filter bass and really give the tracks a menacing effect I really liked. And the album ends with two of its strongest cuts as well. Uh, For the Love of Tish may be the shortest track on the album, but its plucking melodic synth blips are a lot more ear-catching than the mixes of pads that envelop most of this album. Really just had me wishing it stuck around longer than just over two minutes. And the eight and a half minute closer, Lost in Lines, uh, develops more of a pulse with its glitchy pad stutterings and muted kick, with some melodic washes and blips slowly coming and going for extra texture. Seems to go by just as quickly as some of these four or five minute cuts. Maybe ends a tad abruptly, but not in a particularly bothersome way. But yeah, that's everything on this album. I mean, I don't think this project is gonna change anyone's life. As far as ambient records go, I have heard absolutely no shortage of material just like this over the years. It kind of approaches the same uh, kind of mood and vibe as, for instance, that last Ace Dana album, A Period. And the Black Dog themselves have peppered their previous albums with these kinds of tracks. But even if it's not necessarily the most creative or original stuff in the world, it's still really freaking nice for what it is. And it flows really well, too, without feeling like the tracks are becoming indistinguishable from one another. Which is refreshing to hear from these guys again. Album flow always used to be one of the biggest strong suits of any of the Black Dog's albums, especially around, like, the end of the 2000s that'll run from, like, Radio Scarecrow to Liber Dogma. Well, the last handful of projects haven't focused on that nearly as much, felt a lot more fragmented. This album definitely feels more cohesively structured than a Black Dog album has in quite some time so that's definitely another plus for me. It may not be the most out-of-the-box collection of moody ambient pieces, but it fits their style very well, and all of it is really well done and really well investing for what it is, and perfectly timed for the crap weather we're about to endure in November. <laughs> I can definitely hang on to this one. I would recommend you give it a shot as well if you're into this kind of thing. I will give it a 7.7 .7 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list? The link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.